better or worse, we are live. <laughs> <laughs> we are alive, yes. Yeah. We are alive and he's alive, most importantly. Yeah. Yeah. Alive, 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 alive for uh, Quick reminder, in three, it'll be three weeks on uh, Sunday, January 24th, in the evening at 6 yes. p.m., we'll yes. have our yes. annual church business meeting. So please, especially if you're a member, please uh, make plans to attend. Uh, it's important to have our members here. And uh, even if you're not a member, of course, you're welcome to attend. Um, they're not very exciting, so just warn you ahead of time. But uh, but they do they do go through quickly. Uh, they don't they don't take very long. So we'll just uh, cover any business needs to be covered, and we'll let you go home. So uh, and then Sunday, January thirty first, the last Sunday of the of the month, will be Missions Sunday. So. Uh, and we thank you again because you're very generous when it comes to missions. And uh, just thank you for all that you do uh, in the, for the kingdom of God. All right. Well, I think all, all of you either have, you either have your physical Bible or you have it on your phone this morning. There's nothing like the Word of God. Amen? You know, it wasn't until I... Started back to church some nine, nine and a half years ago that I truly discovered the Word of God because before that, I might read it sparingly, uh, but most of the time, the only scripture I got was at church. Whatever they covered at church that Sunday, that, that, that's the scripture I got, and that, that held me till, till the next Sunday. So... Uh, but what a discovery it was. And you know, there's probably no book that is more discussed than the Word of God. And that discussion can lead to disagreements, disputes, disapproval, distress, and even disdain. Because when you discuss the Word of God, you might displease or disturb someone because they dislike the Word of God. Some try to dismiss it, to discredit it. They would like for us to just discard it or dispose of it or make it disappear altogether. And because of disbelief in a lot of people, they disregard the Word of God and they disobey the Word of God. They also discourage the reading of it or the studying of it or the presentation of it anywhere. You know, it's no longer in our schools. You can no longer display it in any public building. You know, when you come to my house, you walk <coughs> into my living room, you'll see my bookcase to the right and on the first shelf are just a few of my Bibles on the first shelf because I do have others throughout the house. Uh, if you keep walking, you'll see my oversized chair that I read from. I have, it's not unusual to have two or three Bibles on that table. Um, most of the time they're study Bibles, and that's where I, that's where I do my reading and studying and uh, sermon preparation a lot of times. So... Uh, you could say the Word of God is proudly displayed at my house. But when you, uh, when you live by the Word of God, you may notice that family, some family and some friends may dislike you. They'll dismiss you, try to disgrace you or discredit you. They might be discourteous. And sometimes families will disown you. Those who refuse to discover the Word of God will be extremely disappointed and will be at a great disadvantage when it comes to eternity. Now being this is the beginning of a new year, I wanted to go to the beginning in the book of Genesis this morning. I didn't really, uh, but I'm going to start 
Right at the very beginning, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Everybody knows this verse. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now that's pretty cut and dry. It's pretty, pretty plain. Not too hard to understand. And yet, there is disbelief regarding this passage. You have scientists and scholars and whoever else who, who disagree with this one verse. They dispute this verse. They try to disregard it. They try to, they give you this, they give you theories. You've all heard of the Big Bang Theory. You probably learned it in school. You know, it's all just some cosmic explosion that formed the planets and the stars and the universe. But right here in the Word of God, when you, dis when you discover the Word of God, right here at the very start, it says God created the heaven and the earth. How was the heaven and earth created? By God. Doesn't get any simpler than that. And yet there are just people who do not want to believe that. You go a little further. Verse 3, God said, let there be light. And there was light. Okay, maybe there was a cosmic explosion. But again, all because of God. That's right. God said, and it happened. Why? Because God is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. There is nothing that he cannot do. But so many people try to disregard this. To dis not just disregard this passage, but disregard the entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I'm so thankful to be part of a church that does not disregard the word of God. Amen. Who adheres to the word of God. So as I just mentioned, there is a lot of dissing when it comes to the Word of God. But there is also some missing when it comes to the Word of God. Because the Word of God can be misread. The Word of God has been misquoted through the, through the centuries. It has been misinterpreted misrepresented, misapplied, and this leads to misunderstanding. Now, an example of being misled when it comes to the Word of God is in Genesis 3. We read about Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Here comes the serpent. Everything's going dandy up to this point. But here comes the serpent. Verse, chapter 3, verse 1. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Well, here he is already trying to mislead Eve, trying to cast some doubt there. Did he really say that? And Eve tried to reaffirm it and says, we may, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, That's right. neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. Mm -hmm. Oh, and here comes the serpent in verse 4, misleading again. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. <laughs> so he's just really laying it on Eve and casting doubt and misinterpreting 
what God said, misleading Eve and causing Eve to doubt. Adam, he's he's there. I don't know how far away he was standing, but he's he's watching the whole thing. I don't know. I guess he's just standing there with his finger up his nose. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. Ah. Wait a minute. What's Eve doing? Why, why is she going? Wait, aren't we supposed to stay away from that tree? Oh, she just grabbed the fruit. Oh, she's eating it. She likes it. Oh, oh yeah, I'll try, I'll try some. So because they were misled and misinformed, Adam and Eve made a big mistake. And they misbehaved. They disobeyed. And because of their misconduct, they were banished from the Garden of Eden. Yeah. And things weren't so hunky-dory as before. <coughs> All because they disregarded what God had told them. You see, we've, we've, we've covered this in Bible study more than once. Now Satan, his greatest weapon is the church. And his battle is against the word of God. So when the Bible is misread and misquoted and misinterpreted, misrepresented and misapplied, well, at the least it can it can lead to a bad sermon. It leads to bad doctrine. That's right. And it leads to bad translations. That's right. Like the message mm -hmm. and the passion. That's right. Which we were discussing in the office this morning. I told you before, I'm going to tell you again this morning. Stay away from the message and the passion. The Passage, pass, pass, whatever it's called. <laughs> Stay away from it. Those are just horrible paraphrases. I don't even consider them the Bible. Be sure you have a good translation. Now, now I'm not, I'm not King James only, but do your research. Be sure you have a suitable translation when you read the Word of God. Amen. And discover the Word of God daily. Because when you when you dig into the Word of God, you'll, you'll discover new things. New passages, different passages, will, not new passages, but different passages will jump out at you. So read the Word. They have so many different reading plans that you can pull up on your phone or that you can... Pull up on the internet. You know, you have one year, one year reading plan. You know, there's a six month reading plan. There's a, a ninety day. Uh, I even uh, uh, the best I ever did, I think, was twenty one days. And that was just that was just straight reading. Not even you know, not looking at notes or anything of that nature. Just just reading it. Just getting it into my getting it into my heart, into my mind. And when I finished. Start it over. Grab another Bible. So, I, uh, well, yeah, because I got, I got a new Bible a while back, a new study Bible, so I'm reading it. I'm reading it at home. And when I finish it, I've got another one on the way. <laughs> I actually, I actually forgot that I'd ordered it. I saw, I got an email. I got an email the other day. Says your, your order has shipped. What? What order? What order? I, had, I, I had to click the link. Oh, yeah, yeah. I ordered another Bible. Linda will be thrilled. That she is. Oh, she is, because I'm running out of room. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like I, need, I, need to, I need to clear out some space upstairs, Larry, and uh, <laughs> bring some of my Bibles and books. <laughs> but, uh, Anyway, it's just uh, it's just a shame that there are just so many, you know, there there are pastors out there this morning who are who are misleading their congregation. 
because they're because they're, uh, they're they're misquoting, they're misinterpreting. You know, they're and and you have people that make these horrible translations. They you know they misinterpret it also to fit to fit their agenda. And so you end up with a church full of people who say they're Christian, they, they think they're they think they're doing right, they think they're on their way to heaven. But they're gonna be, but they're sorely mistaken. Sad. And when they find out, oh, it's gonna it's gonna be a sad day for them. Mm -hmm. So I pray that you're never that you're never disinterested in the Word of God. And that you'll never allow yourself to be misled or misdirected or misguided right. or misinformed. As I said, read it. Read it through. Read it again. Read it again. Read it again. Don't ever stop reading. Even if, it, if you just read one chapter a day, you're getting the Word of God into you. That's all right. And whoever may be watching, if they're, if they're only if they're only watching five minutes, ten minutes, well, hopefully they they got enough of the Word of God that it planted a seed. You know, there is at least there is some good that can come out of Facebook. Of course, there's a lot of bad that comes out of Facebook too, and a lot of censoring lately. You can't hardly. Uh, you can't hardly express conservative views or even Christian views without being censored or put in Facebook jail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hasn't hit me yet, but I'm I try to be careful what I post. Uh, but I'm not I'm not shy about my faith. And if I see a good quote or I see a good passage in scripture, I'm not I'm not hesitant to share it. You know, I just you know I want. I want everybody to know about the Word of God. I want everybody to see the Word of God, to read the Word of God, to hear the Word of God. I want, I want new people to discover the Word of God. You know, it's, it was good for me when I was a new believer. You know, when I discovered the Word of God, as I read through it and through it again and again, I started increasing my discernment. And it's so important to have discernment in this day and age because of all the false apostles preaching a false Jesus, preaching a false gospel, <clears throat> misleading you. Don't ever be ashamed to have the word of God on the table in your house. Don't ever be afraid. Don't ever. Don't hide the word of God. Let your. If you have company. Let let them know. Yes. The word of God is prominent in my house. I read the word of God. I, I love the word of God. Be proud of it. You never know. They see that. They see the word of God. It could spark a discussion. And then that discussion could possibly turn disbelief into belief. Isn't the Word of God great? Yes. And I love the Word of God. It's powerful. I didn't mark the scripture, help me pastor. It's, it's powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. That's in Hebrews. I think it's Hebrews 4.12. I can find it real quick. Yes. Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The beautiful thing about the word of God, when you when you read it, when you digest the word of God and get it into your heart and in your mind, it's, it's hard for the devil to tempt you. It's hard for the devil to mislead you. 
You know, he tried to he tried to sway Jesus towards his way when Jesus was in the desert. Oh, and he, you know, and he, you know, what says, you know, of course he wouldn't he wouldn't give the full the full scripture sometimes, so he would so he would misquote. But Jesus knew the word because he was because he is the word. That's right. And he would say, it is written. Yep. Yeah. Basically told Satan, you're not going to mislead me, bud. I know the word. I am the word. Get behind me. Get out of here. And that can be your statement to the devil when he, when he tries to misquote, try to mislead you through the word of God. He said, no, no. No, no. I know what the word says. I know what's written here. Get behind me, Satan. So be thankful for the word of God. Yes. Discover, amen. discover it every day. Yeah, amen. I hope, I, I hope that you weren't disinterested this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. He's coming back. Amen. What a day that'll be. Yes. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father. Oh, we just love you so much, Lord. We just thank you. We thank you for your word. That's so powerful. Lord, I just ask that you just open every heart here and watching. Open every heart, open every ear, open up every mind. And we would just receive the word of God daily. And that it would just that it would just be engraved in our hearts and in our minds, Lord. And that we would just hear it with great clarity. And that we would proclaim the word with great pride. And pray that we could reach someone out there, someone who is in disbelief, Lord. And that we could sway them. And that we could bring them to your way, Lord. Bring them to the right way. And lead them on the narrow path of righteousness. Oh, Father, just be with us as we go about our daily lives. We thank you for the blessings that you bestowed on us. Look forward to blessings in 2021. Look forward to what you're going to do with this church, with Faith Harbor in 2021. Lord, let us be a remnant church. And let us stand strong. Yes. No matter what the devil throws at us. Let us stand strong in the face of any persecution that may come our way. We will stand on your word, Lord. We will never be discouraged. We thank you, Lord, and give you all the glory and 